Now, I had become aware of a company called Parabon. They were doing something called snapshot phenotypes, where they were taking DNA and using it to predict what these criminals looked like from the crime scene DNA. Now, these aren't meant to be photographs. These are just meant to predict with high confidence the traits, someone's eye color, hair color, shape, face, distance between nose and chin, chin and forehead, that type of thing. And I really didn't think the science was there yet to be able to do this. But this is an example you can see up on the slides of a Parabon snapshot from crime scene DNA and the actual photo of the person that we identified through genetic genealogy as the contributor of that DNA. Here's another example, and another one, and another one. Now, they're not all this good. Of course, I picked the ones that I thought were really stunning, but there's a lot of these. I mean, I could show you double the amount. Um, this one was so good that this man, after he saw it, he stood up in church and said, okay, I give up, it's me. I'm the guy, I did it. So sometimes it's really, really good. And so I had reached out to Parabon and started a relationship with them. In fact, before the Golden State Killer suspect arrest, we were working on a pilot study together, not with perpetrator DNA, but with Doe, with two of the victims from the killing fields, to see if genetic genealogy would be able to identify them. So it was something that I was already you know, inching toward, but didn't jump in with both feet until after everyone became aware that genetic genealogy and GEDmatch were being used. And so at this point, Parabon and I decided to join forces to offer genetic genealogy services to the law enforcement community. And really, this has become a turning point for crime solving in America. Um, these are some of the perpetrators we've been able to identify as persons of interest. Some of these people have already pled guilty and some are going through trials. Some are already deceased. We've had 56 successful identifications in the first year we've offered this service. And here's some more of them. Now, when you add up all these investigations, it's over 1,000 years of cold cases where the investigations have finally been resolved with genetic genealogy in just this year. And of course, you know, the ones that haven't gone to trial yet, they're still innocent until proven guilty. My job is not to uh, identify someone and then have them go arrest him immediately. It's to try to develop a theory of who the contributor of that crime scene DNA is. And then law enforcement has to do their traditional investigation, build a case against that person or rule them out. Which, by the way, not all of the cases that I've worked successfully have been public because sometimes we identify the contributor of that DNA, but then he's ruled out. There's another reason he's been able to explain why his DNA was at that crime scene. So it's not an automatic arrest. It doesn't mean that they're gonna go out the next day after I tell them the name of the person that I think it may be and arrest that person. They're gonna spend weeks or months determining whether that really is the perpetrator of the crime in question, building a case, collecting abandoned DNA, and confirming or refuting the theory that I've come up with through genetic genealogy. 